turned on the TV to break the silence. I was the only one at home. My parents went for a function. I would have stayed over at a friend's place if I had known earlier that my parents would be late. I went to prepare something to eat before I went to sleep. The light in the kitchen flickered and I froze. It stayed normal and I continued what I was doing. A sound made me drop the bowl I was holding in fright. I went to peek out the window, hiding behind the curtain. I only saw a cat. I scolded myself for being too jumpy. I ate my meal, watching reruns of Family Guy. The lights flickered again, and I hugged my knees to my chest, watching the lights as it came on and off. I said a silent prayer that the power should not go out and held my breath in anticipation. The lights stayed on and I sighed in relief. Though it was just getting dark, it would be worse if I had to stay alone in the dark. Our house was situated farther from the other houses in the neighborhood, so there was a higher chance of not being able to get help in time. My dad was a politician, so I was used to them having to go out. A shadow passed the side of the house and I jumped. I calmed myself down, thinking it was just the cat. The time was 8.24 p.m. People would be in their homes, doing whatever it was that people did in the evening. Another shadow passed and I frowned. That shadow was too big for a cat. My ears perked up. I could hear voices. Who's there? I asked, my voice shaky. The voices stopped abruptly, then came a knock on the door. I remained seated, glued to the sofa. I was sure the door was locked. My heart started to beat faster and I got very scared. Who is it? I squeaked. Open the door, dear. We just want to have a quick discussion. It was a man's voice. I didn't know who it was. I was in trouble. I didn't know what to do. I just stared at the door in fear, wondering if this was how I was going to die. The person at the other side of the door rattled the handle and cursed loudly. No one's here to save you. The sooner you open this door, the better, another voice said. Crap, there were two of them. Now my heart went into overdrive. I stood up on rubber legs and crept to the kitchen. I picked the pepper spray and a kitchen knife. I held out the kitchen knife in one hand and the pepper spray in another, my hands trembling. The door started to shake as something heavy hit it continuously. I gasped. They were going to break in. I had only watched things like this in the movies. It had never been a personal experience. The door gave way and two masked men stormed in. When I saw that they had guns, my arms became as limp as noodles. The knife and pepper spray fell to the floor, clattering. I opened my mouth and screamed. The shorter one slapped me, effectively shutting me up. He covered my mouth with duct tape. After tying me to one of the dining chairs, they made their way across the house, stuffing our valuable things into their duffel bags. I spied the knife I had dropped on the floor, about two feet away from me. I hopped on my chair, trying to move it closer. I stopped when they came back to the living room. Where's all the cash? The taller one asked. I shook my head. I didn't know where my parents kept their money. Probably in the bank, like all smart people. When he asked me and I shook my head, he hit me with the butt of the gun. The duct tape muffled my scream. The shorter one stood over me while the other man went inside. I eyed the knife, trying not to make it too obvious. The man watching me grew bored and began to walk around the living room. He took a vase and put it into his duffel bag. He didn't notice that I had inched closer to the knife. I used my toes to carry the knife up, my face staring straight ahead. My toes lost their grip and the knife clattered to the floor. The man's head swiveled to me. He shook his head when he saw the knife. Pesky little girl, 
wasn't going to hurt you before, but now you're just begging for it. He walked up to me and I tried to move away. I only managed to move the chair a few inches before he grabbed my hair and wrenched my head back. He slapped me and I tasted blood in my mouth. My eyes watered from the pain. He slapped me again, clearly enjoying himself. Phil, what are you doing? The other man asked as he came back to the living room, his duffel bag full to the point of tearing. I spied some of my mom's jewelry hanging off the sides. Phil's grip on my hair tightened. She was trying to break free. I had to teach her a lesson, he said. Phil asked if they had stolen enough, and his partner replied that the jewelry he took must be worth a fortune. I knew they were. My mom was in love with shiny things. My dad was all too happy to pay for it. He loved his wife and always did his best to keep her happy. We have what we want. Leave her. Let's go. Phil hit me again before they left, dragging their bags behind them. Phil waved to me before closing the door behind them. That was the last thing I remembered before darkness took over. My parents said they found me like that, unconscious on the chair. They had left the function in a hurry when one of our neighbors called to ask if they knew the men leaving the house. The police were already looking for them. I had no information to give them. They wore their masks throughout. I was taken to the hospital. I had never gone through anything as scary as what I went through the night before. My parents took me to see a therapist who helped me deal with the trauma. I developed anxiety if I stayed alone for too long. It wasn't long before my parents hired a bodyguard for me. Since that day, I have been consistently trying to let go of the fear and troubled thoughts. I know it is only a matter of time and I would be able to put the nightmarish incident behind me. However, it is not that easy. Oh, the feeling of moving into a new apartment with the person you love. There's no feeling better in this entire world. After about five or six months of dating, me and John, the love of my life, decided to move in together. We were more than ready and above all else, more than excited. Since the moment we talked about it, we've been hunting for apartments left and right. It didn't take long and we finally found what we were looking for. It was a beautiful two bedroom apartment in a good part of town and above all else, it had two parking spots, one for me and one for John. This was a rare commodity in our city since there were so many cars and virtually half of that number were parking spaces. Anyway, we talked to the landlord, and before we knew it, there we were. We were standing right in the middle of our new apartment. We couldn't believe it. This is a special occasion. I think we should celebrate, John said, and I agreed with him before I kissed him. Wait here, I'm going to go get something, he told me before going into one of the bedrooms, looking for God knows what in our luggage. Hold this glass, baby, he told me. John came back with two glasses and a bottle of expensive champagne. For us and our future together, I toasted before sipping on the champagne. Everything was perfect. We were both doing really well. He had an office job working for a big firm as an attorney. This meant that he had a pretty big salary, but the downside was that he was most of the time at work. I missed him so much each time but I knew it meant a lot to him, so I couldn't say anything. My job was a little bit different than his. First of all, I was working from home. Actually, I could work from anywhere in the world. I was a freelancer, designing logos and websites. I used to have a corporate job, but then I got into design and I quit. I never looked back and I've never been happier. I actually made more than I used to. Anyway, we drank the champagne, unpacked, and went into the bedroom. To be honest, we were making quite a lot of noise, but it wasn't late. It was about 9 p.m. or something. While we were, you know, doing our thing, we could hear something. It was like something in the wall, like a scratching or something. First we thought it may be some sort of animal blocked in there, but the wall was solid. How could the animal even go into the wall? While we were talking about the noise, the weird sound stopped. What's up there? 
I asked John. It's a vent. This is weird. Why would a vent be in the bedroom? Maybe it's for the air conditioning, he told me. It was really high up and we couldn't reach to see what's up with it. John needed a ladder, but unfortunately we didn't have one that night. So he decided to check it out in the next couple of days when he would buy one. Anyway, the night went amazing. And before we knew it, we had to wake up and go to work. John woke up earlier than me, but I could hear him, so I opened my eyes just as he was dressing in his suit. I told him he looked good, and then he leaned over and kissed me. It was so romantic. Our lives finally began to take shape, and from the looks of it, it was going to be amazing. Before he left for work, he told me that he made coffee, and it's in the kitchen, and also, he told me another thing. He was going to be late tonight. He had a difficult case he needed to take care of and he would be home only after 11 p.m. Don't wait up for me. You go to sleep. Oh, and make sure you eat, he caringly told me. Of course I'm going to wait up for you. You're not going to sleep without a goodnight kiss, I replied. Then he was out the door. I slowly got out of bed and drank my coffee. The day went on as usual. I talked with some of my clients created some drafts, cleaned the house a little. It was pretty normal. As I was working on a project at around 8 p.m., knowing that John was going to be late, I heard the front door. I jumped out of my chair thinking it's John. The big smile on my face, I went into the living room and I watched how the doorknob started turning. But something was odd. The doorknob was turning, but he wasn't coming in. The door being locked. John? I asked from the other side of the door. No answer, so I asked again. Did you forget your key? After I did that, the doorknob stopped turning. Instead, loud banging on the door scared me so bad that I took a few steps back. John! I screamed, but the banging became louder and louder. It was like the door was coming off its hinges. Realizing that he told me he'll come home after 11 p.m. and it was only 8 I knew it wasn't him. It was an intruder. Someone was trying to break into my home. The next thing I did was to grab my phone and dial 911. Hello? Someone is trying to break into my home. I'm alone. Help me. I told the officer on the phone. He said that someone will be there shortly and I should stay on the phone. Shortly after, the banging stopped, but I remained on the phone. After that, someone knocked at my door. I freaked out again, but the operator said it was a police officer. So I slowly opened my door, and he was right. I told him everything that happened. He checked around the building and couldn't find anyone. He advised me to stay inside with my door locked until my husband comes back. John finally came home, and he was surprised to see me up at that late hour. What happened? Why are you shaking? He asked while grabbing my hand. Someone tried to break in. I was so scared and I called the police, I said to him. Fortunately, nothing else happened that night. The next evening, he came back early at around 6 p.m., which was something rare for him. We had dinner and it was a quiet night. The next day, he was supposed to work late again. It was 10.30 p.m. and I heard the doorknob turn. I called the police immediately and as soon as I started talking with them on the phone, the banging on the door stopped. They came, as they did on the first night, and couldn't find anything. The same thing happened the next night as well. I felt like I was going insane. Ma'am, are you sure someone was banging on your door? The policeman asked me. He started to think that I was imagining things. Yes, I'm not crazy. Someone tried to break into my home three times, I yelled at him. But then I apologized for getting so angry. The weekend came, and finally, John wasn't going to the office. He was home with me all day. At around 8 p.m. on a Saturday, he saw that we were out of pasta. I'm going to the store down the street to get some pasta. I feel like eating some delicious carbs this evening, he told me. I also had a craving for pasta, so off he went. After about 15 minutes, my doorknob started turning again. Then, as usual, the banging started. I freaked out and called John. He came back running from the store, and what he saw on our main door made his blood run cold. It was a photo of me pinned to the door. 
the photo had a big X marked on my face. More shockingly, we saw that the door of our next door neighbor was half open. None of us had the courage to go in there and investigate. Shocked and frightened, we called the cops. The police on investigation found several photos of me and my neighbor's drawer. Each photo had blade and knife marks on it. However, there was no sign of him and his belongings. Apparently, this man was living alone since many, many years. Nobody in the building knew what he did or where did he go. The police promised me that they would give us a call if they find any leads. We haven't heard from them yet, but John and I have been very cautious since then.